So today we're going to be discussing the growth of women's empowerment. Um, in preparation for this call, we read four articles that will guide the discussion that address various startups and organizations and their work um, in this field. We're going to be talking about girls' health, educa girls health education, um, sweet society apparel, and fitted for work that have opened doors for women in terms of job opportunities, education, and health. And we have a lot left to do, um, as we have been reminded by the last article as well, um, when we found that um, there was a teenage girl who um, had a teenage girl in Nepal that had died um, because she was living in a period tent um, and she suffocated. So there's a lot left to do in the health education world. Um, so let's just kick this session off with um, our first topic um, about this line of work. Um, and we're going to be talking about the peer to peer model first. Um, which we found, which we saw in the Girls Health Ed article um, that tries to empower girls through health classes. Um, <clears throat> but when I was reading this peer to peer um, article, though, I, I just kept thinking about um, how appropriate this would be for Peace Corps programming. Um, I served as a Peace Corps volunteer in uh, West Africa for two years, and this is the exact kind of programming that we were trying to do. Um, I didn't specifically work in health, I was working in economic development. Um, but I did like partake in a program sort of similar to this um, that is called grassroots soccer and they have a bunch of different categories but they do different health topics including like malaria and girls health education but then they also do like financial planning and things like that. I think that's a great idea if you can find a way to whenever you're starting a company having different channels that you can reach out to um, and so connecting with the program you were doing before for anybody who's got an idea similar to this would be fantastic. Um, and I guess, you know, you've been on the inside of that, of that group. What would be the best route for somebody to go who's, say, you know, if they were going to email somebody or cold call somebody, who would they reach out to to start that kind of conversation? How can somebody who's looking to form one of those partnerships uh, distinguish themselves or, or make sure they get in through the right channel so they don't just get thrown out with the the, the rest of the the rest of the water um, going off of that um, and just adding to like reaching out to local um, organizations or local groups or just smaller scale I think um, just like as a personal example I found it ex every time that I've tried to so like I guess I should start by saying I run um, girl empowerment programs in my community and i tried to start off big and like i tried to go to like girls inc and like some big nonprofits and like reach out to them and be like hey will you like take on my program like this is why it's unique and i've never really received a response but then i found like really talking to like local leaders and like community members that really gets the idea off the ground just because they want to support you and nobody really reaches out to them in the first place I'd like to pitch in here since you mentioned um, what you want and that's something that I really wanted to speak about. Uh, it's really important for us to realize if you want to become sustainable, if you want to uh, live sustainably, you need to very clearly demarcate what you want from what you need. So um, simply just not buying clothes um, because you don't need them at the moment can make a bigger difference than going and buying clothes which have the sustainable clothes tag on them because you really don't know how authentic they are and and, and then you're just following a fad which which is basically what all of these um, organizations or companies that try to sell sustainable I items I would say are doing because living a sustainable lifestyle today has become something that a lot of people want to do not only um, in their conscience but also um, to not put it negatively but it has become something like a social fad and um, as as much as it's really great it can also mislead when it comes to things like this uh, which which we had which was earlier mentioned you know as 
we don't really know how how real it is and um sometimes the processing of the clothes has taken up more energy so it's it's very important for us to understand that reducing our consumption becomes really important um in this kind of a scenario and then maybe if you know there is still that um need or even a small want we could try something that we can um you know like again was mentioned earlier get on an app which is um which has been possibly uh, tested and tried and um, rated so something like that